suppressor foot set from Shopee recently and it's only for 160 pesos. We're gonna try them out if they work or not with my So Simple sewing machine and I'm also gonna share some experiences along the way. If you're interested about these presser feet, then just keep on watching. The first presser foot that we're gonna be trying out is the straight stitch foot which is the most basic of all presser feet. It has little grooves that will guide you on how wide or narrow your seams to be. Honestly, if you already have a general purpose presser foot, I don't recommend buying this individually. I just wanted a few presser fit from the set but buying this whole set is way more cheap than buying individual ones. Next is the zipper foot. It helps you to sew closer to the zipper teeth. Unlike with the general purpose presser foot, it has two sides where you may attach the foot to the machine depending on what side of the zipper you are sewing. And it also has a space here where the needle will go. And always remember that if you're gonna sew using the right side, the teeth must also be on the same side. And the same goes with sewing on the left side. You are going to attach the zipper foot using the left side. Next is the invisible zipper foot. Unfortunately, I don't have any invisible zippers to try it with, but just like with the zipper foot, it allows you to sew closer to the zipper teeth. You can see that there are grooves at the back where the zipper teeth will come through. Next is the rolled hem foot. I really had the hardest time using this foot because it's a bit challenging to start, but basically it helps you to achieve a rolled hem much more easily. And it also gives more of a flat hem than a round hem because it has no groove at the back so the hem will stay flat. There are two ways to start the stitching with this foot. The first one is finger pressing the hem first and making a few stitches. Then, while the needle is down, lift the presser foot and then feed the remaining fabric to the presser foot and it will continue making the rolled hem automatically. And the second one is what I did. First is to stitch on the fabric without any fold and then lift the presser foot and lift the needle, remove the fabric, and feed it through the presser foot. I really had a hard time putting the fabric into the presser foot. I don't know, maybe the fabric was too thin or maybe I just needed more practice because this foot is normally used for thinner fabrics. So maybe I just needed more practice. And with this foot, it is always important to guide the right amount of fabric to go through the foot because what may happen is only a one-fold hem with a raw edge hanging out or a weird looking hem because there are a lot of fabric bunched under the stitches. Basically, I didn't achieve a neat looking hem with this but I definitely will practice some more to be able to use it in the future. Next is the applique foot which is basically a transparent foot which allows you to see what's underneath. It also has a mark in the middle which if you align to the edge will give you an even stitch. Next is the teflon foot or leather foot or non-stick foot which is good for sewing with leather or something with like a plastic material because as its name suggests it is non-stick and will allow the material to go through the machine more easily and without it sticking onto the metal presser foot because materials like leather tend to stick on metal presser feet. The roller foot is an alternative to the teflon foot and it works better with thin fabrics and layers of fabric which do not feed easily because of these rollers that facilitate smooth feeding of the fabric through the machine. The over edge or overcast foot is used in finishing seams especially if you don't have a serger and since my so simple sewing machine does not have an overcast stitch i'm just basically using a zigzag stitch to finish my seams and to prevent the fabric from fraying the button sewing foot is used to sew buttons it has a textured surface at the bottom to keep the button in place and you can use a zigzag stitch in order to attach the button to the fabric and always Always check first if the stitch is fit with the buttonholes because you don't want your needle to break or bend. And 
honestly my experience with this foot is that the fabric underneath still moves so you need to make sure that the fabric you're working with is stable and I think it would be of great help if you place something underneath to prevent the feed dogs from moving the fabric where you're sewing the button. The quarter inch quilting foot looks like the straight stitch foot but it has markings on the edges. The left side has an eighth of an inch and the right side has a quarter of an inch guide as well as along the sides and it is a great help when turning corners to achieve perfectly even seams. The blind hem foot has a similar function with the rolled hem foot but this foot gives a less visible hem. It has this plastic guide that will help with alignment which you can move left or right depending on the length of the stitch that you want to use. But this sewing machine does not really have different length settings so adjust the guide based on that stitch. What you have to do is to double fold the edge that you want to hem, fold it like so and that bit of fabric is where you are gonna sew. The straight stitch part of the blind hem stitch is not gonna appear on the outside of the fabric because what's only gonna appear is that point that catches a little bit of fabric on the outer. You can definitely see the thread here because I'm using a different color of thread so that you can easily see but of course if you want a blind hem use the same color of the garment that you are working with. Thank you for watching this video. I hope this helped you in any way and if it did please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to see more. And also, if you have any suggestions, please comment them down below. See you in my next video. Bye!